Welcome back to Robert Lowe, where I show you the ins and out of graphic design that pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today I'm stepping out of Illustrator for a second to show you how to make an urban hip hop clothing line logo in Photoshop. Now prior to this logo design, there are some things that you need to plan for, which pretty much defines your audience and the target that you're going after. I go into this idea in depth in my how to design a logo for your apparel company video. You should check that video out because it reveals a lot about the mentality of your audience as well as eliminating the subjective art claims made about your logo and the way that it looks. However, if you're here to just learn how to make a logo in Photoshop, then that's fine too. Go ahead and smash the like button because you're going to learn a lot about that today. And if you're new to my channel, then go ahead and subscribe because I do this all the time. However, in the comment section below, tell me what your favorite logo is. Mine's has always been the Chuck Taylor All-Star logo. And to me, that logo defines timelessness. And they would never really need to redesign that logo, ever. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and make magic. <laughs> And I think about Photoshop is that this is a raster based program, which means that it's not vector. Everything is going to be kind of pixelated at the end of the run. So what we want to do is make sure that we're working in shapes instead of pixels and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this background and then I'm going to go down here to the shape tool, which is pretty much this ellipse down here. It's kind of already built out. I'm going to click on that. Now, if we hover up to the status bar, there's a bunch of stuff up here that we can kind of play around with. But the one thing that we want to make sure that's 100% accurate right now is this shape. So if this is set to path or pixels, make sure that you set this to shape. Now with that shape tool, I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag out a shape. And with this shape, I'm going to go ahead and turn the fill off, but I want to turn the stroke on. And then I want to raise the stroke to maybe... 80 pixels now I want to just go ahead and command J and duplicate that and just make it smaller and as you can see it's starting to make like a bullseye kind of thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the first one and then zoom in now this time I actually want to make a circle inside of this circle except with this circle I want to go ahead and turn the stroke off and turn the fill on and then I'm gonna move that to maybe like right here now I want to make some more stuff on the side so so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna grab the pen tool and also making sure that this pen tool is set to shape and not path I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a shape. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to turn this off real quick. And as you can see, it's making like this emoji eyeball wink or whatnot, which is pretty cool. That's what I want. However, I want to zoom in just a little bit more. And I just want to make my signature smile. So usually what I do is I create a shape like this first and then I create another shape that kind of looks something a little bit like this. You've seen it in like Toriyama's drawing. So if you guys ever watched like Dragon Ball Z or anything like that, then you definitely know what I'm talking about where it's not really a smile, but it's not really not. It's off to the side. It's kind of curvy whatnot. This is what kids like nowadays. So I'm going to turn the strokes off on this and then I'm going to turn this into a fill. And then when we zoom out, this is what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and group those together and then I'm going to turn on the background and this is what we have. And now I just want to give this some text. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the ellipse shape tool and I'm going to turn the shape into a path. Okay. And then here in the center, I'm just going to draw out a path. And now I want to take the text tool and just kind of get on this path. Now, as you can see, when you hover over the path, it turns into like maybe a type shape or whatnot with like maybe a squiggle around it. And that's what we want. So it's just going to type on the path. That's basically what it's saying. So I want to type out the word smile and I want to fix this kerning real quick, but I'm going to go ahead and size this down some. And that looks really good. So the font that I used today was Futura Bold. I'm pretty sure that it's installed already on a lot of people's computers. You can definitely find it on Google and you can definitely download that. I recommend it. However, we want to go back into paths. We want to click on this work path and that's just going to bring back up that path real quick. Now with this path back up, I can finish this logo out. So I want to call this one Nation. However, you notice that this actually came in like this and that's not what I want. So the way that we would get this to flip over and come up down here, is just to go to the path selector, which is this, I guess you can say this, this selector right here that's above the shape tool. And we can click on this little ball right here and just kind of move it up like this. Yeah. 
and this is looking pretty good so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go one more time into this and i want to bring up the polygonal tool so i want to create a star and in this star i want it to have five points so instead of just having three sides i want to make sure that this has five and then i'm gonna hit star so it actually makes the star i don't want any smooth and dense or anything like that but i'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay and it's gonna create that star for me now i can kind of shape this out like this and then scale it down some and I just want to put these stars on both sides of this circle. So I'll put one right here and then I'm going to move one over maybe like right here. However, I'm not 100% sure I like it like this. So I'm going to turn off the strokes and I'm going to turn on the fill for both of them. Then I just want to go ahead and kind of transform them both down just a little bit more so it can actually fit inside the circle. And I'm just going to drag those back out. And this is looking really good. As a matter of fact, I just want to go ahead and kind of finish this up. So I'm going to go to the first ellipse that I made and make a copy of it. And then I want to scale this down. Now with the polygon lasso tool, I'm just going to go ahead and create a box over here like this that comes around this actual shape that I created. And I want to mask that out and then I'm going to hit command I. And then I want to do it again on the other side, except this time I'm going to use the paint bucket tool to try to get that out. And then I'm going to take the paintbrush with the max opacity and max flow and just kind of go around this one right here to get me just this side right here, which is what I want. Then I want to duplicate that and hit command T and just kind of circle it around over here like this. And you guys, this is looking pretty good, but does it look good in black and white? Is it memorable? Okay. When people see this smile, are they going to remember what this smile is attached to? Does the elements actually fit? what this is actually trying to say here so smile nation is a smile here's some stars that's come from a nation that looks pretty good when we scale out can i still tell what it says it says smile nation as a matter of fact there's a smiley and then there's a nation i can scale all the way down i can still see that smile and that nation i can't see the word smile but i can still see the smile i can still kind of see nation when i zoom all the way in though and we're just showing maybe like this side of it i can still kind of understand what's going on there's smile and there's shun so maybe smile nation over here maybe a wink but it looks as if it's smiling and that looks like nat so smile nay smile nat maybe nation up here not so much it just says smile but it has to have like this element here for it to be something so people know that it's kind of patriotic or something like that and over here it kind of loses its memorability as smile nation is not really seen fully the second test that we're going to run here is does it look good inverted now it looks pretty decent to me however it loses its kind of style points you can say with this smile right here and as a designer we have to understand ways to fix this so there's a numerous ways of doing this what i like to do is just go ahead and call this black for white and then i'll duplicate this layer and i want to move this up so we can turn this one off and then i want to turn this into white for black so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the background black and then we're going to turn that off and now that i got that turned off with the shape tool i just want to go through the layers and figure out what layers are inside of this face that i can give a stroke to like for example this actual eye right here i can give this an actual stroke and then whenever i turn on the background layer this actually shows itself yeah. What I want to do is just kind of flip these on and then I kind of want to show you guys just a, a small difference. Just taking a little bit of time with your logo makes that much of a difference. Whereas where I had this as the inversion, this is what we came up with. And technically, you guys, this is kind of it. So all I want to do now is just kind of turn this over to the side just a little bit. I kind of like my logos cocked off to the side, but this is technically kind of it. Now, there's a lot of stuff to be said about a logo being made in Photoshop. But the one thing I do need to say is you need to limit your effects. You don't want to have a thousand and one different effects on your logo. And the reason why is because it loses out on that timelessness when you do that. And I know that it's tempting to do it in Photoshop because you just have all those tools at your disposal. But if you're going to make a logo in Photoshop, just at least be a little bit cautious about what you're doing. Now, another thing that I have to kind of bring up with you guys is we made it with shapes. But when we zoom all the way in, we have those pixels and with those pixels, it will lose quality over time so you want to go ahead and send this into illustrator and just pretty much redraw it as a matter of fact i'm gonna go ahead and export this out and open up an illustrator and then show you guys how to turn this into a vector
So now we drop this PNG into Illustrator, and as you can see, it's kind of you know wrinkly and all that stuff. That's because it's pixelated. But what we want to do is just click on this and then hit the image trace at the very top. And as you can see, it fixed out all the lines and all that stuff. We're gonna go ahead and hit expand and then zoom in. And as you can see, those lines are now for the most part straight and very smooth. And if we want to make this kind of transparent, we're just gonna go ahead and click in the white and just delete it. As a matter of fact, we can use the magic wand to delete out all the white. And the way that you would know that it's all done, just go ahead and hit command. And then you can see the grid lines behind it, which just means that it's transparent in the back. And with that final tweak, we have finished the static version of this logo. Now this logo was made to work in black and white static situations, but in a dynamic setting, it doesn't really give justice to the messaging. So if we can get 100 likes on this video, I'll follow up with a motion version of this logo in After Effects. If you're new to my channel, then go ahead and subscribe. I low-key do this all the time. You can check out the rest of my channel and just catch a bunch of value all the time. And if you have any comment or questions about this logo, then go ahead and leave in the comment section below. I'm definitely here to talk to you about it. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and close out this video. So stay amazing, stay creative, but above all else, stay awesome.